So, this is the second part, uh, we are starting our discussion earnestly with the atomic and molecular structure. Now, uh, many of you know what I am going to teach, because uh, it is a part of your studies right from your high school days and uh, college days, but nevertheless it is important to recapture the atomic and molecular structure because that has got fundamentally something to do with the spectroscopy. Because uh, spectroscopy is a uh, is a science that deals with the interaction of matter with electromagnetic radiation. Therefore, the matter the components of the matter are the ones which are going to be affected uh, affected by the properties interaction of electromagnetic radiation normally involves the interaction of uh, with electrons, protons, nucleus and all those things. Therefore, it is important for us to know about the atomic and molecular structure of a compound. So, what I am going to teach you in this aspect. So, you can see on the slide in front of you that the concept that the matter is built up of tiny discrete particles traces its origin to ancient Hindu culture scriptures such as Vedas. The description of atoms and electrons in molecules are known as Paramanus, Anu, Kana and all these uh, terminology has permeated the Indian social milieu since 2000 BC. However, it is the, the much of the information about the atomic structure etcetera, Paramanu and other things as we knew in Indian culture has been lost, but it was John Dalton in uh, uh, 1802 he provided us the first glimpse into the structure of atoms and uh, rightly he is called the um, uh, father of modern atomic theory. He provided the first scientific hypothesis of the structure of the atom in 1802. He suggested that the matter is composed of tiny real particles called as atoms which are indivisible and which cannot be created nor destroyed. Atoms of each pure substance are identical irrespective of the nature of the material. What he said essentially is the atom in a gold metal all atoms are uniform and identical. Similarly, atoms in steel, uh, iron, they are all uniform and uh, identical to each other and similarly for copper, this uh, metal and other metals etcetera. So, atoms of each pure substances are also identical in nature, weight, size and other physical properties. Therefore, atoms of one substance pure substance differ in weight and other characteristics from other substances than the same substance. Further what he suggested is that the union of atoms occurs in definite numerical proportions which results in chemical combinations which we normally recognize nowadays as compound formation. Okay. So, the this much knowledge has not changed because we over the years we have learned quite a lot about what is a nucleus, what is a proton, what is electron and all those things. But the fundamental principles what he taught us somewhere around 1802 is that the chemicals are formed by the combination of several elements which will produce compounds in definite proportions. This does uh, this has not changed. So, the principles uh, evolved several hundred years uh, ago, they are all still applicable for our day to day life in some form or the other. Our views might have changed, 
our uh, method of dealing might have been changed, our method of discovery and other things have changed, but the fundamentals remain essentially same. For example, even the atoms we know that they are composed of electrons, protons, neutrons, mesons and several pi mesons etcetera, but the fundamental uh, being fundamental particles they remain identical to each other that is what Dalton has suggested that that is where the greatness of Dalton lies. So, um, I, but I will continue our discussion like this that subsequent developments in science have led to the expansion of atomic theory and experimental data generated by a number of workers such as Michael Faraday, Rutherford and other peers in the discovery of electrons, x-rays, radioactivity, nuclear reactions and subatomic particles. It is now widely recognized that atoms are composed of several types of ultimate particles which I just now told you that they are all uh, um, too small for even independent existence, but nevertheless they are all ultimate particles the same. So, some of them are capable of independent existence outside the atom and some others are capable of existing only momentarily outside the atom or inside an atom. Among the stable particles what we normally recognize in our day to day chemical life uh, scientific life is electrons protons and neutrons as having the independent existence for our day to day science uh, requirements also. So, we invoke their uh, structure and we invoke their uh, uh, properties at each and every aspect of a chemical reaction. So, among the atomic components the stable particles therefore, are electrons, protons and neutrons. Electrons are made of uh, this is a very simple system. Uh, uh, if I want to teach you about electrons etcetera you will be laughing at me, but at the same time it is important for us to recognize that electrons are made up of small, but energetic negatively charged particles whose existence was proved by Sir J J Thomson and electrons are fundamental particles of all substances that we come across in our day to day life. Then incandescence the um, impart negative charge electrons in general uh, when they strike the uh, strike a uh, TV screen or something like that cathode ray tube they impart negative charges to the objects in their paths and get deflected in applied electromagnetic or electrostatic fields. So, if there are uh, if the uh, there is a positive article uh, if there is a positive electrode and uh, if there is a negative electrode electrons will always move towards the positive electrode right. So, these are all fundamental laws which nobody can change further they had also shown that they could cause ionization in gases. So, electrons do cause ionization gases they whenever we expose photographic plates they mm, uh, cause the photographic plates to burn off and then e they yield x-rays and um, again gets suppose you take the electrons and you hit them on a metal plate this thing and then you will get other uh, rays which are not electrons, but electromagnetic radiation having a different wavelength. So, electrons are also being smaller particles they can be treated as uh, waves or they can also be treated as particles. So, all these waves and particles will move uh, in a wave, uh, wave form and whenever these electrons are bombarding the metals the movement of the amplitude and frequency of the outcoming uh, rays will change and they are known as x-rays. Some of them could be hard x-rays, some of them could be soft x-rays, soft x-rays people use it for uh, x-ray medical purposes etcetera to uh, photograph the bones and uh, bone structure etcetera and hard x-rays are used for some other purpose such as the identification of the uh, metals uh, in uh, high energy fields. So, Thomson it was Sir J J Thomson he evaluated the ratio of the charge to mass this is a very important property charge to mass the, uh, for an electron 
from different sources what he said is the it has a charge of minus 4.8029 into 10 raised to 10 and an atomic mass would be approximately 0 0.0005486 atomic mass units because we do, we do not use atomic mass units when we convert it into actual number what it means is an electron weighs 1.6603 into 10 raised to minus 24 grams. Now, the uh, another advance with respect to electri uh, uh, electrons was de Broglie's uh, theory that uh, they also possess wave properties such as reflection and diffraction. This formed the theoretical basis of extra nuclear structure of the atoms. So, um, so, um, I think this much information should be more than enough for you for our at least for our purpose. If you are studying a uh, slightly higher degree or something like that, then it uh, we would be spending some time on how the electrons are discovered, how they experimentally set up etcetera, etcetera. But essentially what we should know about electrons in our uh, course is what I have ta taught you so far. We may not use the electronic charge or atomic mass units directly in our uh, day to day requirement, but that much information is helpful. Now, you may also say that uh, the uh, what about the other particles protons, protons are the exact opposite of electrons. So, if a substance is made up of protons and electrons the charge should match now is not it the protons are found to be identical with hydrogen atoms because that is the lowest element smallest element we know. So, uh, less than uh, uh, having independent existence. So, the proton it is supposed to be having one uh, proton and uh, that is known as proton. So, you can also call hydrogen atom as proton from which single electron has been removed. If you take hydrogen atom to make the hydrogen atom neutral you need to have one proton and one neutron. Now, proton is there electron has been removed. So, it must be having a positive charge. So, the protons are also present in all types of atomic uh, species and hence considered as fundamental particle whose mass is 1.00757 atomic mass units and its charge is 1 plus 4.8029. Then the other particle, uh, particle that we know of having independent existence is the neutron. The bombardment of light elements such as lithium, beryllium, boron etcetera with alpha particles is, yields penetrating radiation consisting of neutral particles of approximately unit mass according to the uh, reaction what I, that I have written here that is 9 beryllium with 4 uh, atomic mass and 4 atomic mass with uh, of helium with 2 protons and if you bombard them with helium atoms what you will be getting is a neutron particle with 1 atomic mass and 0 charge that is important a 0 charge. So, the property of the neutrons uh, is very well utilized in our day to day life because many of the substances because they contain more neutrons apart from protons and electrons they lend stability to the metals, stability to the elements, stability to the compounds etcetera. So, that is a very important aspect. So, the former is used as a here alpha particle is used as a bombarding particle in the previous example what I have shown previous slide and the latter is the product of radioactive decay. Now, neutrons that means neutrons have been discovered in radioactive decays. So, unstable particles and composite particles do not have any role in the ultimate composition of the matter. This is what I have been trying to tell you. So, sort of uh, um, uh, fundamental truth what it is basically unstable particles and composite particles do not have any role in the ultimate composition of the matters they do not take part in the chemical reaction or even if they do their uh, effect is so minimal that we can safely ignore 
the presence of uh, subatomic particles in our day to day life. Now, the modern atomic theory what we have been uh, discussing is in recent years has a highly mathematical character. You can write several equations for the particle movement and for the nuclear movement and all those uh, uh, things and several physical and chemical characteristics can be derived from our current understanding of the atomic structure. In simple terms what I want to tell you is that the structure of the atom as we understand today is uh, um, based on Rutherford's theory that an atom consists of a basic protons and neutrons uh, along which there are several electrons going round and round. The charge on the protons is balanced by the revolving electrons and the uh, uh, a revolving electron around a nucleus presents a very stable picture because of the centripetal and centrifugal forces and an atom remains in space that is it does not the electron does not fall into the proton because normally you should remember that electron has no mass almost nil. So, it may if there is the momentum is not balanced the electron may fall into the proton and uh, several things can happen which are not imaginable in uh, day to day life. So, in simple terms what uh, we have is an atom uh, what we should understand is an atom should consist of a large number of unoccupied space, but populated by revolving electrons around a positively charged relatively stable nuclear mass called as nucleus, which is composed of neutrons and positively charged protons. So, uh, there were also I have also been explaining to you about the x-rays. So, Ronjan's experiment uh, on the bombardment of a target with cathode rays that is uh, electrons has yielded a highly penetrating radiation of short wavelengths and which he calls x-rays. So, such radiation is also due to the energy released when an inner electron is released because when you take the electrons bombard them on a piece of uh, metal the metal will knock off some of the electrons and uh, such radiation is due to the energy released also when an inner electron is released other electrons drop into vac vacant spot. Now, you should uh, understand the atomic structure in such a way that there are electrons round and round there will be ground uh, there will be s shell k shell l shell m shell etcetera. So, when an electron from l shell goes off the one with m shell will fall into that and uh, the to maintain the electrical uh, neutrality. So, such radiation is due to the energy released when an electron is released therefore, an atom is believed to consist of two parts namely a positively charged nucleus which is small in size the what is the size the size is approximately 10 raise to minus 12 centimeter. It is comparatively heavy with respect to all the electrons put together in the same system. So, it is also an extra nuclear arrangement of electrons loosely arranged around the nucleus in a space of about 10 raise to minus 8 centimeter. Now, you should recognize here when I say that the electronic um, the nuclear size is 10 raise to minus 12 centimeter and electrons are arranged in a space of about 10 raise to minus 8 centimeter. The space around it is of the order of about 10 raise to 4 uh, centimeter area 10 raise to minus 4 centimeter which is almost about 10,000 uh, times than uh, the uh, an electron can occupy 10,000 the volume of electron the uh, what it occupies would be 1 over 10,000 1 by 10,000 of uh, centimeter space. Therefore, uh, we can assume that in general all the electrons they all um, they are all diffused you know they they are not fixed exactly they may be moving in that small space in large quantities in uh, different directions etcetera and uh, there is a wide variety of, uh, of possibilities. 
So, the nucleus governs the physical properties of the element and the extra nuclear structure is considered as responsible for the chemical properties of the element. So, now what do we finally, call this structure? The atomic nuclei basically it, it is protons and neutrons put together constitute the weight of the element. The mass number is the whole number closest to the in magnitude to the actual weight of the element. When we say actual weight we mean atomic mass units. Since neutron and protons differ by unit charge we may write neutron gaining an electron or losing an electron converts itself into a proton and proton gaining or uh, losing an electron converts it into neutrons. However, this equation is a very, very, very simplest case. The small masses of electrons and positrons forbid their functioning in such reactions. In general, the, even though such a equilibrium reaction is supposed to take place, it does not take place because of the small masses of the electrons and positrons around the nucleus. <coughs> so, in, um, in 1913, Sir J. J. Thompson showed that neon contains atomic mass of about 20 and very small fraction of mass contains number 22. Since the chemical properties of both atoms are exactly the same, Saudi suggested that array it is the chemical which is having different weights, but having same properties. Now, which is against Dalton's law which we discussed earlier. So, then uh, they came up with a suggestion sorry he suggested that it could be a isotope that means, it may carry more number of electrons and does not change the chemical properties at all. So, such a substance is called as isotope. And these isotopes are all there in for all, almost every element in the periodic table. You can look up some of your Google and other uh, structures, uh, data providers who will tell you a lot about uh, such isotopes. They are basically identical chemically and differ only in physical properties, which are dependent upon the mass. So, elements of even atomic number are more at abundant. This is another observation made from. Uh, the uh, properties. So, elements of even atomic numbers are more abundant, more stable and richer in isotopes than the elements of odd atomic numbers. So, except hydrogen and tritium, neutrons and protons tend to be equal, equal in almost all elements. If there is a change, the change can be only up to 1.2 or 1.3, but not more than 1.6. So, that is the ratio of the protons and neutrons cannot change uh, should not be more than 1.6 otherwise it will lead to the instability. Okay. So, <coughs> nucleus with even number of neutrons are more abundant than those of odd numbers and uh, nuclei with even mass numbers are more stable than the nuclei of odd number. These are the fundamental principles. So, what does, uh, how does it convert itself into uh, spectroscopic data? Now, this uh, the slide in front of you says that early mass spectrographic data of hydrogen indicated that atomic weight is approximately 1.00775. So, uh, the combination, this much combination, uh, this much material can react with an uh, oxy with oxygen having an atomic weight of 16 and this value was acceptable because 1.00778 gram of hydrogen combines with 8 gram of oxygen. However, subsequently oxygen isotopes with 16, 17, 18 they were all discovered and therefore, the two types of mass numbers are in use. One refers to the chemical atomic weight of oxygen with 16 as the reference and the other one is known as atomic weight that refers to the average of the isotopes 
uh, that is 16.00447. The former is usually accepted for the routine purposes and the physical values are used to describe the properties related to the atomic nuclei. So, the atomic weights of the elements show remarkable constancy in general indicating that the isotopic comp composition remains constant throughout the universe all the time, any time, anywhere. So, only oxygen shows higher abundance of heavier isotopes in the atmosphere than water. This is good for us. Further, variation in the atomic weights are generally not noticed for heavy elements due to their radioactive elements. So, the what we have here? The nuclear stability is in general understood by nitro uh, nuclear to proton ratio that is neutrons to proton ratio it should be for better stability it should be unity. And however, since protons usually um, you know repel each other if there are too many protons around uh, each other they will be um, repelling each other. So, for elements containing few protons tendency towards equalization of protons and neutrons is always there. Okay. So, another factor that affects the nuclear stability is the shear mass of the nucleus. Nuclei possessing excessive mass they would be usually spontaneously unstable they would be radioactive elements. Such elements we deal rarely, but the um, such elements also lose uh, heat particles I keep on losing the energy until they fall into the stable range, stability range. So, this phenomenon uh, various processes are involved by the emission of alpha particles, beta particles, gamma particles etcetera and uh, they are until the elements fall back into stable range. The energies associated in these processes are, are of the order of several million volts, electron volts. So, now, what we want to do is um, having known the structure of uh, the uh, atomic structure, how do we use this information for the electromagnetic radiation or spectroscopy of the substances. So, for that we have to understand what is meant by the electromagnetic radiation and how does the electromagnetic radiation interact with the matter. Interact with the matter means it has to interact with the protons, neutrons, electrons etcetera. So, that aspect what happens to the changes in the energy of the electron or the electromagnetic radiation when they interact with the materials. So, that is part of the spectroscopy. So, that we will be discussing in our uh, uh, next class that is interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter. So, we will continue our discussion uh, in the next class. Thank you very much for your patience and have a good day. Thank you.